Uh, this is uh, the Block 6, the Great Depression, Section 3, Flight to Roosevelt, and the election of 1932, and the election of 1932, Roosevelt v. Hoover. The Democrats nominate Roosevelt. They are thrilled to do so. They are excited to do so. They taste power in their hands. The Republicans look around to see if anyone else is if anyone is interested in challenging Hoover. No one is. And the Republicans forlornly nominate President Hoover for re-election. The contrast in the two men could not be more significant. Roosevelt barnstormed around the country with the theme song of his campaign, Happy Days Are Here Again. And the song, Happy Days Are Here Again, was played at political rallies uh, for candidate um, Roosevelt. Hoover said to the American people, I'm not going to campaign, I'm going to stay in the White House and try to fix the problems of the Depression. Roosevelt's happy-go-lucky, optimistic character contrasted with the weight of the country's problems pressing down on Herbert Hoover's broad shoulders. By the end of the campaign, Republicans aren't even bothering to campaign uh, for Hoover any longer. Democrats are excited, Democrats are inspired, and as you can tell from the electoral map, uh, the Democrats win an overwhelming victory. Uh, Roosevelt wins an overwhelming victory. Uh, Hoover carried uh, the state of Pennsylvania, the only large state he carried was the state of Pennsylvania, and traditional Republican strongholds in New England, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire. Uh, but it was a clear and obvious vote for change that the new man in the White House was going to change things. And he promised on the campaign trail with his Happy Days Are Here Again song and all of the excitement, he promised the American people what he called a new deal. Um, a new deal for the American people, a new deal for the American economy, a new deal for the American working man. He was very unspecific as to what exactly this new deal meant. He did not give, this is a five point plan for the new deal. All Roosevelt had to do was stand up there and not be an absolute crazy person, and the country was not going to vote to re-elect Hoover. Roosevelt inspires with talk of a new deal for people. No one knows exactly what that means. Roosevelt doesn't know exactly what that means. Um, but the, the, the mood of the country was so obviously anti-Hoover um, that people voted for Roosevelt overwhelmingly. Roosevelt changes American politics by building the electoral coalition that he builds. Both parties today get their votes generally from different sorts of people. Um, Roosevelt broke the post-Civil War party system. And in doing so, Roosevelt inaugurated a party system that would last you get different dates on it. At the earliest, 1980. I'm going to argue that 1980 broke Roosevelt's party system. And I want to have a look at who were, who made up Roosevelt's coalition. This is the New Deal coalition, or the uh, this is the basic 20th century Democratic coalition, the New Deal coalition. People that voted overwhelmingly to put Roosevelt into power, people who overwhelmingly voted for the New Deal, people who overwhelmingly voted for this change to come to Washington. Who are these people? What is the New Deal coalition? This is an important thing to know. It starts with, with white ethics from your urban areas, from your American cities, Irish, Italians, Germans, your, your Poles, Jews are your white urban ethics that flock to President Roosevelt's back. Labor unions and blue-collar workers vote overwhelmingly for the Democrat Roosevelt. The traditional base of the Democratic Party is in the South. That continues. Roosevelt's coalition includes the vast majority